Hey everyone, it's Eric Thor here and today I'm spilling the tea on the 16 personalities. Today I will be using my INFJ Sixth Sense to share the dark deep secrets that you have been hiding from the world. Yeah, today I will be receiving confessions from the 16 personalities. I asked the 16 personalities to send in their personal deepest darkest secret. Something terrible that each personality type has done. So, stay tuned to find out what the different 16 personalities are capable of, but don't want to admit to. And learn about the dark secret of the 16 personalities test. Today I will be discussing the darker unethical side of the 16 personalities and how it can be used for bad. So, first of all, the 16 personalities can be used for many great things. Truth is, it can be used for introspection as a tool to better understand yourself, to see yourself, your true self, what you really want, what you really value, what is really important to you. It can help you make better decisions about your life, your career and your relationships so that you can live a happier, more fulfilling life. Yeah, truth is, we live in a world where most people try to be something they're not. Most people try to fit in, blend, play the rat race, work in their career uh, that their parents told them to get. You know, we live trapped in a society that tells us who to be, constantly making us feel bad about ourselves. And the 16 personalities can be used to help validate you and who you are. However, it can also be used for bad, yeah, it can be used to stereotype you, it can be used to trap you in an idea of yourself that isn't really you. It can be used at work to eliminate bad personality types. It can be used deviously to socially engineer people, trying to manipulate people based on their personality type and their personality data. I received a confession today from ISFJs and ISFJ just said, I once ate the last cookie in the cookie yard, and I felt really guilty about it, but the cookie was so good. Yeah, ISFJ, I understand the temptation to eat the last cookie. I mean, cookies are irresistible, and somebody should feel bad for actually leaving that cookie all alone in that yard. So I wouldn't say this is a dark secret at all. I would say you did the cookie a favor. You showed him that even the lost cookie is valuable and worthy and actually i think the last cookie tastes the best what i've found when it comes to the 16 personalities test and this is the truly scary when you think about it is that the 16 personalities test is used to gather data about you for marketing purposes yeah based on your answers on the 16 personalities test the 16 personalities company behind the company behind you can use this data, sell this data to marketers, advertisers across the world. And this data, this information about you can be used to serve you with personalized advertising. Yeah, advertisers can use the fact that you're an introvert to give you catered personal data that will fit this lifestyle. Yeah, they track what introverts do, what introverts like, what introverts tend to enjoy and what makes an introvert buy in a product. And they market to get you to buy their product. The 16 personalities test is a big five test and tracks how neurotic you are. And if they find out that you're neurotic, they will use emotional imagery to make you anxious, stressed, and to make you feel bad so that they can push you to vote for a certain party or to support a certain policy or to buy something that will make you feel better about yourself or that you think will make you feel better about yourself. Yeah, these kind of things are done with the 16 personalities test and these kind of information has been shown to be used for advertising purposes. We have Cambridge Analytica and this was a huge scandal back in the days. Cambridge Analytica used people's data and was found to use their personal preferences for marketing purposes. Now Cambridge Analytica doesn't exist anymore but the practices remain and are done and there is nobody put uh, to yell for this. <laughs> so yeah, this is a big unethical problem with the 16 personnel test. So be very careful with how you share your data online and be mindful of what kind of advertisement and what kind of imagery you get from online. If you notice that the ads around you are preying on your emotional 
turbulence or your neuroticism, if you notice that the imagery being sold to you is used based on social engineering, be mindful of this. Notice how people are trying to influence and use your personality and your information against you. This is a confession I received from an ENTJ personality type. The ENTJ said, I once became the dictator of a small developing country and I was forced, well, I forced thousands of people to work in my silver mines. Wow, that is pretty messed up. Well, I guess you're not the first person to do it. The other unethical thing about the 16 personalities is how it's used at work. Did you know that the 16 personalities the MBTI inventory is used under a million different names across a million different companies across the world? Yeah, there are tons of companies that rely on personality types for recruitment and at the workplace. And how do they use it? Usually not the right way. What I've found is that 16 personalities tests are used for screening purposes. That means uh, companies will want to hire a certain set of personality types. The belief is that our company needs extroverts or our company needs people that are very outgoing. Our company needs people that are logical. Our company needs people that are structured and organized. So companies have this idea of what kind of personality type they want. Not realizing that culture and the behavior at workplace can be socially manufactured. Well, when I was at work, I pretended to be an extrovert. I did my best to present an outgoing face. I worked in customer service. I knew how it worked. You had to be open to take calls. You had to be social. You had to uh, engage people. And I could do that for 40 hours a week. And after that, I needed to charge my batteries. I could push myself to be outgoing. And so, when I was asked to take a personality test at work, I did an only logical thing. I lied to get the job. I had to lie and pretend to be extroverted to get a job. Yeah, that's the only way. If I would have said that I was introverted, if I would have admitted to the fact that I was quite reserved, if I would have been myself, I wouldn't have gotten the job. So, I pretended to be something I was not to get a job. And I think a lot of people should be aware of this. When people ask you, when companies ask you to take a personality test, think about what kind of answers they expect from you. Think about what kind of a candidate they're looking for and lie. Honestly, lie. There is no um, unethical thing about lying on a personality test. Unethical thing is asking you to take it in the first place. Yeah. Instead, what they should do is they should share their expectations with you, letting you know that they are looking for this kind of a candidate and letting them know what kind of personality or what kind of behavior they expect from you at the workplace, what they are paying you to do. <laughs> and if you don't like this or if this doesn't fit you, go look for another job. That's my recommendation. Find a job that fits you. But if you can't find a job that fits you yet, if you have to compromise and if you have to get a job, even if it's not the best one, lie. You can do it. You can be whoever you want to be. You can change your behavior, do whatever you want. So, yeah. I received this confession from an INTP. The INTP said, I once hacked into a coworker's laptop and leaked his browser history to the entire company. Wow. <laughs> That's some effort from an INTP. I didn't expect the INTP to put so much energy into spiting somebody else. Good job. Well, okay. So another unethical practice I've seen with the 16 personalities is that people use it to label other people against their will. Yeah, I've seen that people can get pretty adamant about... Uh, thinking that other people are mistyped. I've seen that people can get pretty intense, pretty aggressive about how to use the personality typology. Yeah, people will aggressively mistype you online and in real life. Uh, have you ever found yourself going up to somebody and telling them they must be an ESTP? And even if they disagreed, you would push on them that no, you are an ESTP. Yeah, it can get even darker than that actually. What I found is that a lot of people will 
not just mislabel or mistype you, but they would also present your personality type in a very, very dark and disturbing light. Yeah, they will say, you're stupid, so you must be a censor, or you're an idiot, so you must be this uh, feeling personality type. And uh, what I see is in conflicts, it's very easy to fall into this uh, problem. It's so easy to get angry with somebody else and become irrational. You can become irrational in the sense that you start building up a fake idea of the other person to fit and explain the anger that you feel towards this person. And if you feel and speak about the 16 personalities out of anger, well, you're not speaking to them out of understanding. And that means anything you say is a misunderstanding. <laughs> so what you want to do is you want to use the 16 personalities to understand and be mindful of how other people work and how they think. You don't want to use it to explain why you hate another person or why another person is stupid because you can find something to like about all the 16 personalities. And chances are, if they're annoying or if they're stupid or if they're difficult, it's because they are unhealthy or they're struggling or going through a bad day, not because they are a certain personality type. Here's another confession I received from an ESFP. The ESFP says, I would sometimes flirt with shy, nerdy guys just to see how they would respond. It'll be so funny to notice uh, when they were starting to crush on me and starting to notice how I could influence their feelings. And, you know, it would take years, but eventually they would ask me out. And of course, naturally, when they asked me out, I would say no. That sounds pretty devious, I must say, for an ESFP. Is that maybe your INTJ dark side showing up? I don't know. <laughs> ISFP If I was busy at work and my boss asked me for extra shifts, I would go MIA. I would turn off my phone. I would run away. I would say I was on a vacation. I would say I've been in, I was in Aruba. <laughs> I'm not going to do an extra shift. I don't want to work. Honestly, I think that's the smart thing to do. Honestly, if your boss texts you and asks you to fill an extra shift, Leave it on scene, <laughs> leave it on, just don't even open it, don't even read it. Just throw away your phone, open a window, throw it away, get rid of it. It's the right thing to do, trust me. It's their headache, not yours. Another confession from an ESFJ. If two of my friends got too close to each other, I would sabotage their friendship, usually by making them fight over a guy. Wow. So you got jealous of them getting close and you decided to sabotage their friendship? That's terrible. Uh, I hope you, you're not doing that anymore. Um, anyways, um, if you like my channel and if you want to support my channel, consider cl clicking like and clicking subscribe. It really helps me grow and I am passionate about creating videos that will help people transform their lives. So well, my goal is that somebody will find my videos and somebody will change their lives because of my videos and somebody will become the next Elon Musk, the next genius, the next person to change the world. I hope that I will create ripples that make other people change the world in different ways. I hope that people change their lives because of me. I hope that people are happier, more fulfilled after watching my videos. So if you want to reach that goal and if your video my videos are helping you click subscribe it costs nothing you can always help and subscribe later here's another confession from an ENTP the ENTP says I created a computer virus that replaces your zoom call video with a scrolling carousel of your iCloud photos wow I could see that going very, very, very badly. Uh, is your iCloud photo history PG? Is your iCloud photo history something you would share with your coworkers? Uh, mine certainly uh, has a lot of cat photos in it. <laughs> Another confession from an ESTJ. If I felt stressed or annoyed, I would call in somebody to my office and yell at them for 20 minutes just to release some steam. 
I read somewhere about the concept called the circle or the chain of screaming, which was like the boss would scream at the manager and the manager would scream at the worker and the worker would go home and scream towards their family or kids. Uh, and that's pretty interesting. The energy that we send out, the energy that is carried on by other people and put into the world. So think about what energy you are sending out to the world. Think about how you are influencing other people. The dark side of the MBTI, or one of the dark sides of the 16 personalities, is when it's used for social engineering. And I've seen that there are some YouTubers out there and some channels out there that use the MBTI to manipulate people. That means they use it for marketing purposes. They use it to make you feel weak or insecure. They talk about or market their channel or videos to people that are shy or struggling in life or feeling bad about themselves. And they make videos that make you feel even worse about yourself. Yeah, they know exactly how to talk to you to make you feel smart. All. They talk about and validate all the insecurities that you have about yourself. They make you feel like you're terrible. They make you feel like you're bad. They make you feel like you're evil or twisted or wrong or so that there's something wrong with you and you need their channel. Yeah, you need to be a part of their channel and follow them and watch their videos to learn how you can become and change this and become better. And you know, I see this with a lot of people and I see this happen across the world, not just with the 16 personalities. I see advertisement that is used to make you feel insecure. So much of the messages that we receive from the world today are about things that are wrong with us. We're constantly told that we suck and we need to change and we're wrong and we're bad and we are not right, you know, and we need to be different. And what I'm seeing is this causes the so-called tertiary loop. Yeah, there's some studies done on the psycho study of personality psychology, and that is that a lot of people tend to loop on their first and third function. So my dad was calling and I just hung up on him. Anyways, uh, what I've found then is silence mode on, is that uh, people harp on their third function. When they become insecure, they go into the third function. When they feel bad about themselves, they go into the third function. They stop sharing of themselves. They stop opening up. They find it hard to express themselves. They pull back from relationships. They find it hard to commit. They find it hard to reveal themselves. Yeah, we go into the second function when we feel inspired, when we feel good about ourselves, when we feel that we are good people that can and should share with the world of who we are. We go into the third function when we feel like we're not good enough, when we feel like we're not able to fit in, when we feel like we're not able to be ourselves, and when we feel like there's something wrong with us. And we go into the third function uh, thinking that, oh, if we go into the third function and keep working through this and keep improving on ourselves and keep working in the third function, eventually one day we will become good people. But often the only thing that happens is we get stuck in the third function. We hyper obsess about every small thing that's not right about us. Every little thing that doesn't look good on camera. Every little thing that uh, is wrong with us. No matter how small, no matter how insignificant in the bigger scheme of things. And we forget to be ourselves. We forget to love ourselves. We forget that we have power, potential, opportunity right in front of us. So... Note this when a channel or a person is using the 16 personalities to manipulate you and to make you feel insecure. And note this when a YouTuber is spreading a positive message about you, helping you feel good about yourself, helping you improve on yourself. I received another uh, confession from an ENFJ personality type. So the ENFJ said, when my ex cheated on me, I gathered all the evidence and posted it all over social media. I have gathered over 100,000 signatures from women pr uh, promising that they will never date him and it's gone viral. Next, I'm planning to post a book about this and how bad of a person he is and it's gonna sell for millions. But why are you putting so much effort into an ex? Isn't it better to just turn the other cheek? Isn't that what ENFJs are about? Turning the other cheek? Maybe for a while, maybe for the most part. And at some point it's like, no, you're dead to me. <laughs> I've been loyal to you for so long. Now I'm gonna do the absolute opposite. Perhaps that's the ENFJ dark side. I don't know. Another confession from an INFP. I wrote the fictional novel about a guy that used to bully me and came up with a thousand excruciating scenarios to cause him pain and to make him suffer for what he did. 
Now the book spans over 10,000 pages and I'm gonna get it published. I must say, I think that's a really great and constructive way of uh, putting your energy into something. You know, emotions are a superpower and if you can use your emotions uh, proactively, well, you can achieve a lot with that. So kudos to uh, putting your anger at somebody into something creative like this. I must say, that's, I don't know if that's dark or if that's just impressive. I received a confession from an ENFP. The ENFP writes that I wrote a song about how much I hate my ex and I made millions of dollars selling it online. I must say I've heard a lot of songs about how people hate their exes and I must say that must be quite relatable. So hey, that only sounds in good fun, but it must feel weird to be your ex and to listen to the song online and to see it played on the radio and to go, uh, this song is about me. <laughs> uh, it's like, hmm. Uh, a bit uncomfortable, I guess. A dark confession from an ISTJ. Whenever I was annoyed about something at work, I would come up with strange, annoying rules just to bury everyone else in paperwork. It felt incredible. Wow. Is that why ISTJs come up with rules? A confession from an ESTP. If I was angry or felt bad about myself, I would find the weakest, most sensitive person in the room and I would challenge him to a fist fight. I guess that's a way to build up your confidence, perhaps? But I've noticed that a lot of ESTPs, good ESTPs, build up their confidence by building up the confidence of other people. So you can empower yourself and empower other people. You can challenge others while making them feel good about themselves. Find ways to challenge others to make them overcome their issues and to grow and find ways to challenge them appropriately and of course challenge yourself. That's I think what ESTPs are all about when they're good, right? Finally, the last confession from INFJ. If I lost patience for somebody, I would flip 180 from being their most supportive loyal friend to without notice, calling them a psychopath and door slamming them and erasing them out of my life and existence permanently. Yeah, I've seen that a lot and there's lots of videos about INFJ door slam. So if you want to learn more about that, check out this video. And of course, I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope you all use the 16 personalities for good, not for evil. I hope that you all use it to figure out who you are and I hope you use it to understand and help other people around you. I hope you use it to connect with and empower the people around you rather than to manipulate or exploit them. And that's why I want to talk about the final and the most annoying thing about the 16 personalities. One of the dark sides of the 16 personalities. And that is uh, channels that rely on robots uh, that post and copy paste the information they find online using AI robot voices and stock photo images that don't make any sense to sell videos about the personality types. Yeah, there are actually robots that just copy paste information about the 16 personalities and create popular viral videos uh, sharing stupid, simple, stereotypical information about the personality types. These channels have no name or affiliate person behind them. They're just robot voices, AI, talking about the 16 personalities. I would say stay clear of these channels because they rely on the four effect to mislead you. They use uh, shallow, simplistic words, abstract jargon to make things sound relatable and nice. They use stock photo imagery to create a visually pleasant experience, but the video serves absolutely no purpose. The video does nothing to inform you about who you are. The video is at best a horoscope sharing stupid lists with little information, little real information about who you are. And chances are you're going to watch these videos and you're going to feel good, but you're not going to remember anything it said. You're not going to have any lasting value from this video. It's like going down the rabbit hole and uh, being like, wow, there's rainbows around here. And then coming out on the other side and being like, huh, there's nothing there. Yeah, avoid channels and 
uh, blogs that just copy paste simplistic shallow information about the personality types go check out youtubers that are positive that are productive that are insightful and that help you grow and learn about yourself thank you all for watching and i hope to see you all in the next video